some really nice examples first. This is probably the best example I have. That is a beautiful little butterfly, unmistakable. You can see the antenna. Uh, beautiful little jar. Oh, there's one of these little uh, zoomorphic uh, lugs we were talking about. Little doggy head. These are fun. You see these uh, on Tula Rosa quite a bit. This is a pine dale, a very nice pine dale, very late pine dale, probably around 1400 AD. And you see that beautiful little butterfly. See the antenna? The antenna are almost always represent represented when you see a butterfly. They never forget the antenna when it's actually a butterfly, not something else. Let me show you some other very small examples, little sherds. There's a little butterfly. I see his antenna. Very cool. One. See the use of the antenna. Any, every time they, they represent a butterfly. I've never seen a butterfly without the antenna represented. I've got two more examples. There's one. This is a lot of charcoal on it, but you can see the butterfly. And there's the antenna. There's the wings, little flight icons on the wings. And I've got one more for sure butterfly. And this is a probably Tularosa jar. I call it Tularosa. There he is. Great big butterfly. And they often have these little ticking on the wings. It might represent flight. So put them on the other side. Okay. Now what I want to show you that are not butterflies that are often mistaken as butterflies. This Cedar Creek. This is often mistaken as a butterfly. It's not a butterfly. That is a is a war icon. That's an arrowhead or arrow point and an arrow point touching. That's war. And you see the back of the arrow has the little where it hooks onto the shaft. And I'll show you that again. That's a war icon. That is not a butterfly. Notice the lack of any antenna or head or anything like that. There's another wonderful example on this amazing Oya I have here. I can move a little bit, bring it forward. I'm not going to lift this, but you can see these here. These these are not butterflies. These are war icons, and you can see the little tang in the back where it hooks onto the shaft. You'll see arrowheads very much like this, made almost identical to this. This is a wonderful vessel. A lot of strange things going on here. This is wonderful spirit break here. Look at that. These are clouds. There's the spirit line, and there is the spirit break. Uh, you very rarely see this where it's not perfectly circular. Somebody <laughs> didn't quite make that perfectly round. This is a Matsaki uh, brown on buff Oya, and a very strange one. It's been drilled. You notice the lid is intact. Look at the drill hole. Now there's one on the other side, and that's a big hole. Look at the other side here. I'm going to move that so it doesn't hurt the vessel. And there's one on the other side. So this vessel was obviously drilled, and they probably hung it, or maybe had a, a way to tip it, you know, to pour it. That's possible, too. I've got another big Oya that's been cut and hinged, and I'll show you that when, it, when we do Oyas. But this symbol is what I wanted to talk about. These are war icons. Those are not butterflies. Now, we have one other. I'm not going to put that back on until we put that back away. I'm not seeing any antenna, any body, and it looks similar to the arrow point symbols, but not really. I almost wonder if we have uh, a third meaningful icon here. We have war icons, we have butterfly icons, and now we have this little guy. And you notice one is bigger, one is smaller. We often see that with meaningful symbols because there's this thing in the Pueblo mythologies about brother elder, brother younger. You often see a big one and a little one. Uh, sometimes it's an attempt at perspective. We're going to leave the juries out on this yet. This could be... I, I, it's not a butterfly. It's something else. And I don't think it's a, a war icon. It doesn't look like a war icon. That's a war icon. <laughs> and this over here is a war icon. That's a war icon. Uh, dates. Okay, this is Cedar Creek. Very late. I'd say 1400, 1420, maybe even later. Pinedale, you're looking at very near 1400. In fact, it probably goes into 1400. This is a Matsaki brown on buff. And this is the earliest attempt at getting a yellow wear. This is when the White Mountain redware folks 
and Zuni Glazeware folks tried to mimic the Hopi yellows to the north. And you can see it has a yellow kind of feel to it, kind of tone to it. A lot of different forms. And I'm going to show these specifically when I get them over because these Masakis, the four or five examples I have are all different shapes. Flying saucer shapes, globular, heel of shoulder. And we'll get into that at the time. This thing is covered with symbols, by the way. Just covered. Most of these little squares with a dot are probably house symbols. There's a lot of cloud symbols. Oh, there's all kinds of all kinds of good things going on on this one. War. War and butterflies. Very similar, not the same. Mm -hmm. 